Hello again, and a chuckle of morning to you from Kimmel Bay Church, and uh, we're glad to have you with us for our morning reflections based on the Psalms, and today we're turning to Psalm 71. If you'd like to press your pause button so that you can just read through this psalm, please do so now. Welcome back, and uh, we uh, turn to Psalm 71. This psalm seems to me to be a psalm, one of David's psalms in all probability, uh, and it seems to be a psalm that, that, that's, that's written by a mature person, if you like, at that time in his life when uh, he's, you know, in the evening of life, as it were, probably, uh, certainly in David's later life. And, and it speaks, as it goes through, of a person who's got an experience in their life of God. You and I would say a Christian experience. Uh, a person who has relied on God during a lifetime which was marked by serenity and mellowness. Now, I know we, we realise that David wasn't always serene <laughs> and he wasn't always mellow. He had his ups and downs as, we, uh, is, as is reflected in the Psalms. But he reached this um, age of the evening of his life, if I can put it that way. And, you know, it made me reflect, really, that there are bonuses in growing old. There are bonuses in growing old. Don't switch off if you're a younger person. There's a word here for you as well. But there are bonuses, I believe, in growing old. And I wonder, as we read this psalm, as we think of it, will you... Uh, Join me as I address two aspects of this business of growing older and hopefully more mellow and more serene. First of all, will you look back over your Christian life, if you have a Christian life? If you've not had a Christian life, then now's the time to do something about it. Uh, get right with God and bring your life to him and hand yourself over to the Lord Jesus. As you look back over your life, can you not with me thank God, thank the Lord for those folks who have influenced you, those folks who have been such a blessing to you down through the years? I can think of many folks in my Christian life, my long Christian life, uh, who have been such a blessing to me, such a blessing and helped me on my Christian pathway and influenced me. They've blessed us, you and I, over the years with, with guidance. They've, been, they've encouraged us. Um, other Christian folk uh, have, have prayed with us and for us. They've, they've shared the scriptures with us and, and other ways of supporting us. They've been there for us. Uh, you've heard me uh, say many times how thankful I am for the family of God here at Kimmel Bay. I don't think we are meant to be alone. I don't think we're meant to plough a lone furrow, as it were, as a Christian. There is a place for Christian fellowship. There is a place for you and I to be, however old we are or young we are, in, to be part of a Christian fellowship, a family of God, the local family. There is the worldwide Church of God, of course, but this is the local family. And are we not finding in these days, particularly <clears throat> with the virus and the things that are happening around us, are we not finding the value of contact with one another, albeit not physical contact, but being able to see one another on screen and telephone and so on? So the first thing I want to just highlight, really, is will you look back on your life as I do and thank God for all those blessings of the people who've been an influence over you. Secondly, can I ask you to consider your present situation, my present situation? Because we've moved, dear Christian friend, we've moved from the situation of um, going through our Christian lives to the uh, mature evening of our life, uh, and we've moved to be able to be those who can be used of God, to be there for those who are younger in the faith. So if you're watching this this morning and you're young in the faith, 
Now, I don't mean young in years. I don't care how old or young you are in years. But if you're younger in the faith than many folks, then I, we want you to know that older Christians, Christians who have been on the pathway for much longer than you have, are there for you, are there for you. I think I reminded you the other day of the dear brother who told me that uh, I had made the best decision of my life and I would never ever regret it. Uh, I told you that once before and I tell you again. And he was right, I've never regretted it. And I want you and I to consider this morning how we can be a blessing. What a privilege, what a privilege for you and I to be able to be there for folk, for younger folk. What a privilege to be able to advise. What a privilege to be able to pray for younger folk, younger in the faith, I mean. Verses 1 to 9 in this psalm remind us of close communion with God. Close communion with God. You and I as Christians are called in this world in which we live, in this world of confusion, this world of sadness, this world of injustice, we're called upon to have a close communion with our Maker, a close communion with our God, a close communion with our Saviour God. An appreciation, if you like, that God has always looked after us and he always will look after us. David says here that God has always looked after him. Verse 3, he says that God is his rock. Hugh reminded us two days ago that God is our rock in the person of the Lord Jesus uh, and the person of the Holy Spirit as well as in the person of God the Father, the Blessed Trinity. God is our rock and we can depend on him. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. David reminds us in verse 3 that God is his rock. Verse 5, he says, you are my hope. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. How wonderful that we are on that uh, platform, if you like, of hope that Jesus offers us. Have you got that? Have you got that hope this morning? Do you do do you relish the fact that one day you will be with him for all eternity? If not, do something about it. There's a good fellow. Verse five: You are my hope. Then and then verse seven. Verse seven: You are my strong refuge. My strong refuge. I was thinking when I was thinking about the refuge. I was thinking in the Old Testament about the cities of refuge. You know. Uh, where they were able to fly into these cities uh, under certain circumstances for safety, for protection. And you and I are able to fly to Jesus for protection. And verse 8, will you note that his mouth is filled with praise. Listen, if you believe these things, if you are wallowing in these things, if I can put it that way, uh, this lovely truth that this psalm puts across to us, we will be filled with praise. And verse 10 onwards, 10 through to 18, verse 14 says, I shall always have hope. David's quite confident. He says, I shall always have hope. He says in 18, I will declare to the next generation. What a privilege. What a privilege. What do you say to me? I've nothing to share. I've nothing to uh, offer in the way of service in the kingdom. Nonsense. Everyone has got something to offer. My dear friend, ask God to show you the ministry that he's got earmarked for you. It might be a ministry of prayer. It might be a ministry of sharing God's word. It might be a ministry of getting alongside people. It might be a ministry of encouragement. It might be all sorts of things. <coughs> Ask God to show you. And the last two verses, 20, 21, 22, we read of praise to the Holy One of Israel. He, our great God, should prompt our praise and our adoration. And let's close with a thought which is highly practical, and that's this. We don't have to be singing uh, praise songs to praise him. You and I can praise our God, our great Saviour God, by the way we live. We can praise him by our Christian lives. Let us pray, shall we? 
Father, we thank you for the maturity that comes with the advancing years. And we thank you for those who are at the other end of the scale and looking forward to growing into those advancing years. And we pray for each one of us, Lord. And we ask, dear Lord, that you will touch us afresh this day with your Holy Spirit and that you will help us to be an encouragement one to the other, that you will help us to be what we ought to be and praise you, not just by our words, but by our lives. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Do enjoy your day. The Lord bless you and keep you safe.